We've got something interesting to look at today. A mint in box. Prime film scanner. 1800i. It's quite a lot of eyes. Digitizing films made easy. USB for PC and Mac. Uh, the requirements there was at least Windows 95 release 2 or Windows 98. And I did try it on the Windows 98 computer that is in an earlier video, but it didn't work. It just came up after installing the drivers. When you tried to start the software, it just says it's not connected or not turned on, and there didn't seem to be any way around that. And we couldn't get it to go, so let's take it apart. Put it here. It's a power supply. It's Switching power supply, 12 volts, pretty normal. USB B things were. Official manuals and things. It didn't come with a CD, but I'd found the drivers online, but yeah. Anyway. So this thing works by You put either a slide or a strip of film in there and that holds it down and then you close that. I'm not sure if it detects that or not. And there's a scan button and then I think something comes out and receives it. It probably shines a light up from the bottom. And I think this is a camera assembly in there that drives itself out. Because you can see a thread in there, a rack. Let's take it apart, see what goodies there are. It's going to be a pretty quick video, I think. Not really much to see. It's interesting, they have actually got bushings, so they can use a machine screw rather than those cheap self-tapping sort of things you usually see in plastics. already falling apart. Oh, that's it for the light. It looks like you just get a cold cathode fluorescent tube and that's it. Oh, does that come out with it? Okay, I'll just the power switch is part of this top piece. We'll get rid of that. Yeah, so there's the tube driver there. Pretty basic. And then there's a little stepper motor. Yeah, so the light comes out as well as this top piece. Oh, I see what's going on here. It's just a single line scanner, so it's not a it's not actually a camera. It's just a single line scanner. So this will move slowly over your film negative or positive. So that's why it's just a tube with no diffuser, because it only looks at one line at a time. And I see, so that's probably made this thing very cheap, because it doesn't actually need a camera in it. It's just this very simple single line device that you find in fax machines. Remember those? Yeah, we're just tearing straight into it. A little bit disappointed it didn't work. I was hoping we could try scanning some film. Okay, so there's a mirror. Silver side out, always. So get the best reflection and then yeah, it just receives the image through that tiny little slot there, which is in line with the tube. And then there's that. That's the lens. Wherever that was there. Yeah, that's it. Little tiny lens. It is quite interesting that they've put actual bushings in the in there. Oh, so when we did that front one, they actually took off all this stuff. Okay, so you only had to do undo the back too to take the, the cover off.
I'm just holding this down, there's a clip there. The ribbon cable, the light connector, the silver steel type of rod. This is a very simple worm gear type thing. Ah, that doesn't have a bushing, that's just your know, normal kind of plastic screws. Very generic self oscillating tube driver thing. What do we got on this board? Ship. Looks pretty custom micro controller, some sort of RAM. Must be like frame buffer sort of thing. That. Yeah. Little sliding mechanism for the the button. That's the information on the bottom. A film color scanner input 12 volt DC 1 amp. UL. Good to see. Uh, it looks like they might use, use a separate transistor thing to switch the light on and off. UL in. Is that only for the stiffer motor? Maybe. Or, yeah, it looks like the other channels are unused. Yeah, there must be some kind of USB thingy bob. I think it looks like the USB lines go into that. Maybe that's kind of use USB UART thing. So I'm not sure what that little thingy is there. Be heavily coupled to that. Maybe that's a special image sensor receivernator. Probably is looking at the way that circuit is laid out there with the image sensor connects onto there. Some tracks go to those test point things which then those appear to come over to this and that's probably a data bus. And that's probably something to do with the power supplies for the CCD. Oh, it's got a home indicator, a little photo interrupter. Interesting thing. Let's take a look inside this. Ah, so that can tilt. Ah, oh, yeah, and there's some sort of Teflon type slidey things that must, ah, oh, yes, slide down that. So it's kept at a consistent distance from the film that it's scanning. Okay. Spring thing. Look at that arrangement of the cable there for the tube. Very nice. Cold cathode tube. Wires crimped onto the the ends. Probably be operated by itself, wouldn't it? Guess we should try turning it on just for fun. Okay, we've got a, a pass by here set to 12 volts. Should we join it up around the right way? Well, presumably the red is the positive. There you go, look at that. Little tube thing turns on. Probably almost never been used. Presumably it's 12 volts. It's drawing 2 watts. 2.2 watts. It's a bit um, glowy at the ends, isn't it? Cold cathode ain't so cold after all. Well, it's hard to see on this, but it shows it's got a really red glow on the end. Maybe it's meant for a lower voltage. Let's see, if we wind it down. And here might be a 5 volt thing, that's 5 volts. 2 volts. Gone. Okay, so it strikes around 4 volts. If it's out. Yeah, okay, so it might actually be a 5 volt input thing. So I've just been burning it a bit with um, 12. Oh well. Very good, that's the little cold cathode driver. Really see those around much these days. Now everything's turned to LEDs. Let's get this image sensor off and we can have a look at that. It's been thread locked. Or whatever that stuff is. Probably because there's an alignment. Yes, there is alignment. See there's slots in the board there. 
So there would have been a critical alignment that we have now just destroyed. And there we go, it's a single line image sensor. Let's get out the microscope, take a look at it. I was thinking you could do this whole video in one take, but maybe not. This guy. I'll have to set it up though. Let's inspect this image sensor thingy. Okay. Not sure how close we can go with this. Let's see. Okay, so we've got a really thin strip of silicon stuff with some bond wires. There's five connections at that end. Are there any at the other end? Okay, there's seven at that end. Some business on there too. Maybe that actually... Yeah, some kind of driver thing. It looks coloured. Well, I suppose it is a coloured image. It is a colour scanner, isn't it? So... I guess that makes sense that it's got colours on it. Maybe this is three or four image sensors. It looks like there's a red, green, blue, and then white, and maybe something else. So maybe this is several single line image sensors with colour filters across them to scan the different colours. Which is interesting because in more modern scanners that I've taken a look at, they just used one single image line sensor and they put, instead of the cold cathode tube, they used uh, RGB LED. So the LED would rapidly change between RGB and that's how they'd pick up the color. Whereas in this case, they're using a white light source. So you've got to use a color filter on the image sensor. So that's interesting. That's very interesting. It's a little bit disappointing we can't get any closer with this lens, but it looks like three channels of something there in the silicon. I suppose it would just be RGB, wouldn't it? Because you can get everything with that. Ah, so that explains why then there were three output things coming off this board here. Three wires, or three tracks come off the pickup. And that goes to three test points and then three of those. And then into three doofies on this little chip. So that will be this chip here. So if you want to look that up, there's your chance. A 9CAE54P. Oh, it's an 8143-12C by WM. Seeing what happens if we blast it with a lot more light. It looks like there's yellow in there. It looks like it's now got red, yellow, green, and blue. Probably just because they've made the green out of blue and yellow. Is that possible? Maybe. Looking up that little chip there that joins up to the image sensor, you can see it's a it's a Wolfson microelectronics 12-bit 4 mega samples per second CCD signal processor with these various features. There's a block diagram of it. So it's got red, green, blue inputs. So there's sample and holds and then those programmable gain array and then offsets, multiplexes, then a 12-bit ADC and then a 12 to 8 mux. Okay, so it's got an 8-bit data bus coming out and then does 8 in one go and the other 4 in the next go. This is the only chip I could find data sheet on. Well, I looked up that PS thing and the UPO one. Didn't see anything about those. Probably custom stuff. Here's what all the pins do. Hooking it up to a colored CCD sensor. Some buffering. Yeah, do we have buffering? Yeah, there's buffering. A little bit of stuff there on the that board there, the transistors, so that will be the buffering, some control signals, and some timing stuff. All the good stuff you need to make an image sensor thing work. Very good. So there you have it, a Prime Film 1800i scanner that unfortunately we couldn't get to work in that other video where we tried to use it in the Windows 98 computer build. Some interesting bits. 
cold cathode tube driver. This could be useful for something. If you want to make something that moves in and out slowly. It's going to need another bearing at the other end though. Because that will just slide out. Oh, they've done it by a stud that's fixed and then a hole in that shaft. And you see, I'd have to put another a bearing of some sort at that end to use that. And they just use the plastic mount. Very good.